afternoon and uh, welcome. My name is Dana Dykhouse. I'm CEO of First Premier Bank and uh, I'm privileged today to serve. Our first uh, more passion and more energy, I have not met her. Uh, she has been a state and for this entire state of South Dakota. I'm glad to introduce President Jose Marie Griffiths, President of Dakota State University, as our first speaker. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. Those of you who are at the watch party live stream. Today we reveal our vision and plan to expand the cyber research industry in South Dakota. This endeavor is complex and future leaning with transformative workforce and economic development impact for the state. Its scope reveals an audacious ambition which can only be accomplished by a coalition of multiple interests aligned towards the same outcomes. What started the spark of an idea for a few has grown to an accelerating vortex that has drawn in strong, enthusiastic, and committed partners to our vision and plan. First, I must give credit to the Janklow administration and Citibank for what's become known as the mission chain for DSU to become a gentle institution to offer degree programs and supply the region's computing-related workforce. Absent that catalyzing decision, DSU would not and could not have become what it is today. When I came to DSU, I found strong nationally recognized programs in cybersecurity with multiple Center of Academic Excellence designations from the National Security Agency and Department of Homeland Security that put us in an elite category with only one other institution in the United States. However, just about every university in the country was chasing cybersecurity. To keep our lead role, we needed a clear identity with a distinctive research activity. And this led us to envision the growth of the Beacon College of Computer and Cyber Sciences and the development of collaborative research through the Messon Cyber Labs, affectionately known as the Mad Labs. The vision was funded by a public private partnership of Miles and Lisa Beacon, Denny Stanford, and the state of South Dakota at the request of Governor Dugard. The labs support groups of faculty to perform externally sponsored, problem driven applied research. One of the labs, now known as the Applied Research Lab, is housed in a separate specialized facility and performs work under contract to federal agencies and private contractors. Little did we know at the time, but the implementation of that early vision would serve as prototype and proof of concept for what you'll hear today. So I'm going to introduce you to four components of the enterprise we're announcing today. The opportunity, the vision, the plan, and the public-private partnership. The national media are full of predictions about the rapidly growing demand for cybersecurity professionals, especially in the federal sector. Just last week, the number of unfilled cybersecurity positions in the United States was estimated to be 402,000, representing a 34% increase over just two years ago. So clearly, DSU's Beacon College programs could help address that need. But then we look at where the jobs were. The vast majority of them were on the east or west coast in states with heavy federal and military presence with specialized facilities. This matched our observation that about 50% of our cyber operations graduates, the most technically specialized degree program, leave South Dakota to perform the types of highly specialized work they're qualified for. So along with the accelerating demand, this map for us was a clear identification of the opportunity. More of our graduates would be needed, but how could we keep a greater proportion of them in South Dakota? Some might have interpreted that map as a negative. After all, what would be the point of graduating more students if they all leave state? No, we interpret it as an opportunity to keep more graduates in South Dakota 
and also attract some of our alumni to relocate back to the state by building the kind of specialized facility that currently doesn't exist in the middle of the country. Our vision is to expand Dakota State University's Applied Research Lab to stimulate a vibrant cyber research industry in Sioux Falls that supports national security and defense, offers workforce and economic development opportunities, and establishes South Dakota as a cyber state. We presented this vision in a number of venues across the state and to Governor Nome, who asked that we prepare a plan. The five-year plan that we developed has two symbiotic or mutually beneficial foci. In Madison, we'll continue to fill our uh, applied research lab to 125 to 150 FDE. We'll increase DSU's capacity to double the number of graduates of the Beacon College from 200 to 400 annually by recruiting and retaining faculty, students, and staff. And we'll expand the cyber talent pipeline and career pathways by launching the Governor's Cyber Academy to offer dual credit programs to high school students statewide. In Sioux Falls, we'll expand DSU's Applied Research Lab with a highly specialized facility that will be owned by the state, by the Board of Regents and DSU. This facility is expected to open in the fall of 2025 and support 400 to 500 full-time equivalents. We'll establish a non-profit corporation to hire ARL staff, perform and manage the applied research, and lease space from DSU both in Madison and Sioux Falls. The new nonprofit corporation will also run intensive summer cybersecurity camps for students from other universities in South Dakota majoring in cyber-related disciplines such as computer science, computer engineering, software engineering, etc. And these are anticipated to start in summer of 2023. As I said earlier, the vision and plan reveal an audacious ambition that requires a similarly bold approach to resourcing. Over a period of several months of presentations and discussions, a strong public-private partnership has emerged. The multiple parties you'll hear shortly are enthusiastic and committed to the vision and plan. Each party's interests had to align with others, such that shared risk would bring shared rewards. I am in awe of the complex partnership that has evolved and will continue to strengthen through the implementation of our shared goals. What you're about to hear will be a game changer for the state. We will propel South Dakota to be recognized as a key contributor to national security and defense. The accumulated expertise, the Cyber Research Brains Trust, if you will, will be located in South Dakota, and the cutting edge problem solving applied research that will be conducted in the state will act as a magnetic force for other individuals, agencies, and businesses to locate close to this specialized knowledge community. And over time, the knowledge community will spawn new ventures and businesses that will stimulate further workforce and economic development. So I'd like to close by saying that endeavors of this complexity require efforts, commitment, and persistence of many, many individuals. And I thank them all for helping bring that spark of an idea to this stunning announcement today. Thank you, President Griffiths. That truly is, your final word was stunning, and this will be a stunning advancement for South Dakota, and we appreciate that. Our next speaker is someone that I met uh, 21 years ago, on, or 27 years ago, on a blind business date, and it's been a great relationship ever since. Uh, great partner, uh, my partner for 27 years in the banking business, Miles Beacom. Thank you, Dana. I don't think you could ask for a better date. <laughs> this is truly a great example of public-private partnerships uh, for the betterment of Madison, for Dakota State University, for Sioux Falls, and our great state of South Dakota. Denny Sanford has gifted $50 million, that's right, $50 million to Dakota State University for the Applied Research Lab to be built here in Sioux Falls. Think about that. Partnership with giving money to Dakota State. <laughs> giving money to Dakota State in Madison, South Dakota, and they're investing in a facility in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The facility will be approximately 100,000 square feet 
built to specifications required to fully capitalize on the cyber research industry opportunity. And that opportunity is growing every single day. The Dakota State Applied Research Lab will keep qualified Dakota State grads in South Dakota versus them moving to D.C. or other large cities across the country. The DSU Applied Research Lab will also continue to ensure that Dakota State continues their successful trend and achieve, continue their uh, achievement over the past four years when you look at increased number of students, increased number of graduations, the establishment of the Madison Cyber uh, Lab, also known as the Mad Lab, the establishment of the Applied Research Lab Madison, and then you have the increased number of cyber research sponsorships from federal and state agencies that just continue to grow, along with increased partnerships from local, regional, and national organizations. The growing number of cyber research expertise in Madison, in Sioux Falls, and across South Dakota will continue to attract other businesses to South Dakota. And it was also reinforced South Dakota as a cyber research state. You may ask, why in the world would Denny Sanford, a St. Paul native, give $50 million to Dakota State University? Well, that's pretty easy. One, he loves South Dakota. And two, he's a business person constantly looking to how to grow something. He sees the potential that this gift will have on South Dakota not only today, but far into the future. When Denny invests or donates, he wants to ensure that his comfort level is high, that investment will have this type of return and positive impact, not only on the organization, but on our communities as well. In closing, all I can say is, Denny Sanford, thank you for partnering with this incredible project for South Dakota. Thank you. Miles, we keep making it, and Denny keeps giving it away. It looks like we're going to have to get back to work. So, Our next speaker, uh, uh, as a former Jackrabbit, I must say this gentleman has risen beyond any expectations a USC grad could have. Uh, the leader of Sanford Health, Bill Gasson. Well, I appreciate that, Dana. I think that's a warmer welcome than describing us as having gone on a date together, so I appreciate that. Uh, no, just I uh, want to welcome everybody here today. Uh, appreciate you being here, and uh, it's an incredible group of people who have an opportunity to stand up here uh, representing institutions, representing uh, the state, the region, that are going to benefit so richly from the incredible innovation that continues to emanate from Dakota State University. But uh, Miles, as you just stated, uh, once again, we find ourselves gathered together selling some incredible things that no matter where you're living at in the world, you find yourself uh, grateful and blessed to be a part of it. But once again, we find ourselves in South Dakota, uh, right in the middle of some incredible things that are happening that aren't happening anywhere else in the world. And right at the center of that again is Mr. Sanford's giving. And so. Uh, I just one more time again, if you could just give a round of applause and just appreciate him for what he's been doing. And as so many people will benefit, and you know, Dana and Dr. Fitz and Miles uh, all mentioned those who are going to be incredible recipients of what will happen through Dakota State University and yet another advancement. But not the least of which on that list is Sanford Health. Transformation that continues to flow from Dakota State University, that which they continue to drive as they push forward for greater innovation, is also going to continue to benefit, and I believe benefit even greater, healthcare into the future. I could not be more excited on behalf of Sanford Health, on behalf of this region, and really on behalf of healthcare in general to be able to have a unique opportunity to further our partnership with Dakota State University. And as they uh, begin to break ground out here at the Sanford Sports Complex, we're so fortunate that we get to be their neighbor 
as we will be announcing and continue to announce as we go to break ground on our virtual care center. And we're so excited for the opportunity to continue the collaboration and the synergies that are going to flow from having those two incredible facilities working together. But it's not just the bricks and mortar, but it really is the innovation that's going to continue to be derived from the work that they're doing each and every day. Uh, we're excited about the way that that's going to enrich and advance our workforce that's ever-changing, that we're going to find ourselves again uh, in the unique position, that we are going to not only have uh, the greatest talent that we've come to know with our incredible clinicians, our nurses, our physicians, all of our support uh, teams that work for us at Sanford Health, but now because of the innovation that's continuing forward and the partnership that we have with Dakota State University, we're going to have the best in the world when it comes to uh, the cyber space, not just cybersecurity, but also in cyber health. Uh, and that couldn't happen but for the relationships that exist, but for the work that's being done here uh, and the investment of so many great and wonderful people. And so uh, we're proud to have the opportunity to donate up to 16 acres uh, of our land out here that will allow them to bring this to life here for Sioux Falls, for the state of South Dakota, and for the entire region. And we just want to thank you so much for your partnership. Thank you so much for the opportunity to work with you. And we look forward to the future. And again, Bill, thank you for Sam's donation to this project. And uh, what a great uh, opportunity to uh, grow this part of our, our great community. Speaking of our great community, uh, our next speaker, uh, when he was elected mayor, could have been accused of uh, jumping on the bandwagon because things were really going. I don't know how many people thought that he would make that bandwagon go faster and louder, but he has. Our Mayor, Mayor Paul Tenhanken. All right. Thanks, Dana. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out today. Glad we did this indoors, by the way. Smart move. Um, as an aside, when I, when I picture heaven, by the way, I picture golf, buffalo wings, and big economic development announcements. <laughs> so this is the perfect spot for, uh, for this today. You know, the city, we've been looking to partner with DSU for a long time, uh, even before I was in office. And we've had a lot of conversations with Dick Henson and Dave Link and Josh and Dr. Griffiths. And, um, it just took the right things to come together for today to happen. And two-thirds of DSU alumni, I didn't realize this until Dr. Griffith shared this with me, uh, call Sioux Falls home. So the, the connection between DSU and Sioux Falls is already incredibly strong. And, and as you all know, we have an incredible business climate here. It's a very attractive place to live, to work, to raise a family. It seems to get better by the day. Uh, and that quality of life uh, and that dedication to a strong entrepreneurial and uh, even techno-centric kind of community is going to really behoove uh, this project as we move ahead. This, the city of Sioux Falls is going to be making a $10 million commitment to this project to be used for the necessary infrastructure, mostly physical infrastructure, but the organizational and programmatic infrastructure as well. That gift will be... Uh, you know, pending the approval of our city council and the appropriation from our council. And I look forward to my colleagues' uh, support for this project as we bring it forward in the, in the weeks ahead. Um, when we sat down and we started talking about this project, the first thing an economic development eye always wants to ask is, how many jobs and are they good jobs? And this project, when it's the first complexes uh, at capacity, will have roughly 500 jobs with starting salaries of $100,000 and up. And I can't think of the last time, if ever, Sioux Falls has seen an economic development win with salaries and jobs in that sort of pay range. And so as we keep diversifying our economy, and uh, I think Sioux Falls has done a good job of that historically, this is an incredible win for economic diversification in Sioux Falls. That sort of uh, pay scale and those, those sorts of jobs will generate at peak $100 million of annual activity uh, that are funded by private enter enterprise and federal contracts. And uh, in the economic development of high-tech jobs, that multiplier uh, for high-tech jobs is six, meaning for every high-tech job that's created, six more jobs are created as well. So in addition to the 500 created at the Cyber Innovation Park, we're going to see a spinoff of 3,000 other jobs in this community. So, 
We talk about public-private partnerships, and in closing, this is really, and I, I wrote this down so I got it right, a public-public-public-private-private private partnership. And there is so many pieces that had to come together to make this work. Uh, and it's very rare to get leadership from the state uh, and from the regents, um, the city, from different communities to make this happen, from Mr. Sanford, from DSU. But I do have to give a special nod of hat to Dr. Griffiths because without her coming to the table with the vision and the idea and the team and the strategy, this wouldn't be happening. Uh, she made it easy. She brought the vision to us, and all we had to do was figure out how to find the money. And um, here today to do that, I'm very excited and honored to have this new partnership with DSU and can't wait to see where it goes. Thank you. For many years, Denny Sanford told me that if we could just find a good bank president, this bank would really take off. <laughs> and 10 years ago, we found one. <laughs> and we're so pleased that uh, Dave Rosenblum is part of our team. But even more importantly, he is part of the Sioux Falls team, leading uh, forward Sioux Falls for two campaigns, along with many other community uh, endeavors. Dave Rosenblum. Well, uh, Dr. Griffiths, let me begin by saying thank you for bringing us together. Uh, I can assure you it's not every day that a farm kid from Iowa gets to follow a farm kid from Minnesota and precede a farm kid from South Dakota to talk about an applied research lab. <laughs> well, Forest Sioux Falls uh, learned uh, of this vision for the DSU Applied Research Lab in Sioux Falls and knew how important it was for the business community of Sioux Falls to come alongside and provide some seed money uh, to get the vision and the planning of the development uh, put together uh, for a cyber IT park in Sioux Falls. This project just fits in perfectly with the long-term objectives of expanding and diversifying our regional economy and just as importantly, continuing to lift the national profile of Sioux Falls and of South Dakota as a great place to live and work. We're just thrilled with the plan that's been proposed and the public-private partnerships that have been developed, and we fully support the DSU Applied Research Lab and the Sanford Health Virtual Care Center uh, as the core of the Cyber Innovation Park right here at this great location. You know, the proposed DSU Applied Research Lab will add jobs, and more importantly, add an extra layer of resources to our economy, and it will further enhance the fact that Sioux Falls is a great place for young professionals to thrive in their careers. So on behalf of the more than 300 private and public investors in Ford Sioux Falls, we are thrilled to be a part of this. We congratulate you and we wish you the best as you move forward. Thank you. As I was thinking about today, I thought back over the last two years, and I think not only in most parts of our country, but in most parts of the world, two things came to a screeching halt, education and economic development. That wasn't the case in South Dakota. And the primary reason that wasn't the case is because we had a leader who was a champion of education and a champion of economic development. Join me in thanking and welcoming our governor, Christy Noem. Thank you. I was sitting here trying to remember exactly when Dr. Griffiths brought this project to me and said, if I can speak with Mr. Sanford and talk to him about this project, would you be willing to partner with us as the state of South Dakota financially and in spirit and get behind the vision with it? Uh, and I said, absolutely. 
I, the moment I met this woman years ago, I was so impressed with her. And what keeps coming to my mind is an individual that I used to serve with in public office that was famous for saying this. He said consistently, a leader with no followers is just a man out for a walk. And she has followers because she has a vision. And she has the right vision with heart that's focused on our next generation right here in South Dakota. And when she talks about this project, you can see her eyes light up, envisioning what it's going to be. It's so easy to walk alongside her and to get behind her ideas because it's exactly what's right for South Dakota too. So when the gift was given by Denny Sanford, uh, I was incredibly grateful. I also recognized the state of South Dakota should step up and that we should be a part of the solution. So South Dakota uh, and I am committing $30 million to the project that is in my budget that I'm asking the legislature to fund this year to partner together to see this in completion with the 10 million from the city of Sioux Falls as well. This is going to not only build out this campus here and expand their programming from 200 students to 400 students, double the amount of capacity that they have, but it will also make sure that we have the chance to take the Governor's Cyber Academy statewide. And we don't talk about it a lot, but there are several school districts in our K-12 system that have had the chance to be a part of that. And it's been amazing what it's meant to these kids' lives. Kids that didn't have the chance to learn computer skills and programming and understand really the opportunities in their careers that that would open up for them. And some of our school districts have had the chance to show that their students and let them participate. But this gift is going to allow us to take that to every single school district here in South Dakota too. And I think that's an incredible opportunity for us. We've talked about the fact we wanted to create the next big industry here in South Dakota. I talked about that years ago when I asked you to let me be your governor and to trust me enough to be your governor that I believe the next big industry in South Dakota could be cybersecurity training and technology training. And that's exactly what this is. That's exactly what we're doing here today is ensuring that we will educate our students here with the highest education possible in this field so that they can stay and work here and continue to provide that kind of professional support across the world for some of the highest DOD contractors and uh, national security agency, um, those intelligence businesses that, that are so in high demand today for this kind of skill set, that's what we'll be training right here. And we can do it all from right here in South Dakota. It's a huge potential for us and it's going to allow our kids to stay here, and have those high paying jobs and not overwhelm our infrastructure and not overwhelm what we already have and appreciate so much here in South Dakota. In fact, I was thinking the fact that Dr. Griffiths, I think we have four DSU students that are going to be participating in the World Cyber Games this year, don't we? We have four students from DSU that'll be participating in the World Cyber Games coming up here in May of 2022. And they'll travel to Athens, Greece to participate in those games. There is no other university in the country that will have four students, um, not Harvard, or Yale or MIT, but Dakota State University has four students that have qualified and will be competing on the world stage at that level to show truly how we do education here in South Dakota and do it with excellence. I think that's something to be incredibly proud of. So while I put this $30 million uh, into my governor's budget, I'm asking the legislature to support me in that. And I have two legislators with me today that are passionate about this project that I'd like to ask them to stand as well. We have majority leader in the House, Kent Peterson, and Representative Mark Willison as well from the Sioux Falls area that have promised me they will get the job done. So it's all on you. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for your vision. This team up here is amazing. There's no other state that has this kind of partnership. And the only reason that we're successful here is because we do everything together. We have amazing people that can be trusted and that link arms and just get a project done when it's to be done. And that's exactly what this ceremony represents. So God bless you. It's an exciting day. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for that commitment. Our next speaker is someone that you may know as a business person as a leader of our state uh, legislature, 
as a two-term governor, and now as our U.S. Senator. But what many people don't know is he has truly became an expert and a leader in cybersecurity. You also may not know that while I was an undergraduate at SDSU, he was a campus police officer. And it is my hope that those records are cyber secure today. <laughs> Senator Mike Rounds. Thank you. No, sit down. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Listening to the governor uh, speak about challenges and the fact that we need cooperation in South Dakota and the fact that we have Denny Sanford once again stepping up and saying, I believe in South Dakota and I want to make things better and I'm investing in something which will make a difference and something that we can build on and something that would be matched. It reminds me uh, back a few years ago when I had to go to the legislature. I wanted to go to the legislature as governor and I asked them to put $39 million into a wet hole in the ground in western South Dakota, the home state gold mine. And we tried to share with them at that time how critical it was for young people to be able to stay in South Dakota and do cutting edge research. Today, because of what they did, stepping forward and having the guts to put that kind of money in and follow it and ask hard questions, but to take and go home to, to, to citizens and say, if we put the money in now, we're going to make a change in our state that will go on for generations. Today we have over a half a billion dollars being invested in that gold mine. And we're doing cutting edge technology research right now with regard to dark matter, dark energy, cutting edge where young people in South Dakota can stay here and work. Well, this is one more opportunity very similar to that. During the past week, I came back from Washington, D.C., where it's a little bit different than out here. People don't necessarily always get along. Um, we come back here and we see people cooperating. We see people standing up, making commitments, finding partnerships. That's critical. Sioux Falls stepping up again as well. Mr. Mayor, I wish you the best working with your team. I think you've been a progressive community that has looked forward to making the same types of investments. In Washington, sometimes we fixate on what's in the past. We fixate on what's going on and who's to blame and why it isn't working. That's not what we're doing here in South Dakota today. Today we are working and focusing on what can happen in the future. In 1958, Chairman Thomas Watson from IBM declared, I think there is a world market for only about five computers. Thank goodness it didn't happen that way. Today, the world has transformed into something that Mr. Watson could never have envisioned. Our very way of life, whether it be communications, healthcare, financial services, agriculture, or the energy sector, are all connected together. But that interconnectivity has come at a cost. We have more potential for vulnerability than at any other point in our history. Our societies become interconnected to the point that just one bad actor could do a lot of damage to a lot of people real fast. Everything we do, whether going to the grocery store, flipping on a light switch, taking a shower, or boarding a plane, all depend on cybersecurity. Making certain our nation has strong cybersecurity presence is critical in maintaining a safe and a secure world. Today, more than ever, we have a responsibility to make certain that the United States is protected from nation states and cyber criminals who wish to do us harm. If you visit with business owners in Rapid City, Sioux Falls, or any small town in between, they'll tell you one of the biggest challenges they face is getting the workers they need to be successful. The same is true in the cybersecurity community. According to a 2021 study, there are currently 2.7 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs globally. President Griffiths has indicated hundreds of thousands of jobs right now available for young people capable of working in cybersecurity. So much of my work in the United States Senate is focused on cybersecurity, given my role for four years as the chairman and now two years as the ranking Republican member of the 
Cyber Subcommittee, or the Cyber Security Subcommittee on the Armed For Services Committee, United States Senate. As a nation, we need to address the growing demand for cyber workforce. They pertain to all levels of government, civilian and military, as well as the private sector. To grow the workforce, we need to for cyber education as early as possible, and that's why the plan investment in cyber activity or a cyber academy for K-12 education is critical. This is a great idea. Cyber education is a vast one that includes training our kids to be computer scientists, data scientists, coders, engineers, and mathematicians. At the national level, we need to do all we can to incentivize our best and brightest to seek cyber careers, including through premier cyber education institutions like DSU. For years, Dakota State University has been a leader in developing the men and the women who keep us safe in cyberspace. Today's announcement solidifies DSU and the state of South Dakota as the home of the next generation of leaders in the cybersecurity industry. The plans for tomorrow are great, and that is a future that's worth celebrating today. And now the rest of the story. Today in world events, we see where the United States and Russia are engaged in a great power struggle. NATO is in the middle of it. We stand here and we watch, and in the news every single day, we look at what's going on and we wonder whether or not Mr. Putin is going to invade Ukraine. He sees it in his self-interest. It used to be that the first attack we feared was a nuclear attack. Today, we know before there is any attack on a country, the first attacks come with getting information from space and then creating havoc using cyber tools. Mr. Putin will attack the communication system in, 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 in Ukraine and around the area. He will attack the transportation system, attack their energy system, all of which will be precursor before he ever commits Russian soldiers into battle. The same thing we find in almost every battle space that our young men and women find themselves confronted in today. And cyber is at the forefront of protecting them, regardless of whether it's an IED protection system in the, in, in the central part of, uh, of Afghanistan, or whether it's uh, looking at internationally at what's going on in terms of breaking down our space communications capabilities. It all depends on our ability to not only fight a war in, on the air, or in the air, land and sea, but in space and in cyberspace. Young people here in South Dakota have an option. Because here, not only as we increase the numbers that are available, they will become experts not just in what we call cybersecurity, but in artificial intelligence, because we can't defend our nation without becoming leaders in artificial intelligence, and it's here today. But there's something else as well. We need them in business, and we need them to be able to be profitable for businesses and to invite businesses to solicit them and to keep them here in South Dakota, which is what this is all about. But the other piece of this, and the important part of it is, we also need those same young people who become active and are part of the private enterprise system to also give part of their time in helping to save the world. And that means working with the Department of Defense, our Justice Department, uh, the National Security Agency, as the governor has indicated, Homeland Security, and so forth. We do both. We can do both because these young people are the best and the brightest. And we've got an opportunity to create these types of partnerships that will go on for generations to come. This is the cutting edge. This is like a city bank or a premier bank all over again for opportunities for young people to stay in South Dakota. And with that, I want to just offer to you my congratulations to everyone involved in this huge project. The governor and having the foresight to go to the legislative body, the legislature for agreeing to work with it, the city of Sioux Falls, DSU and, and what Marie Griffiths has been able to do right now with us, to Denny Sanford and all the folks that work with Denny on a regular basis, whether it be banking or healthcare. Partnerships are what make it work, and the, benefactor, the benefactors will not only be our nation, but a whole bunch of really, really bright young people who get to stay and create families in South Dakota. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Rounds, and thank you for your leadership in this 
very important area. Our final speaker represents the Board of Regents, and Tony has spent his entire life serving South Dakota in so many capacities. And I think many of you would agree, when you're in a room with Tony Van Heusen, he's the smartest guy in the room. Tony? Thank you, Dana, I think. Um, you know, a friend of mine and former co died last fall who used to say that when you're the governor, you really have two jobs, and that is to respond to challenges and create opportunities. And we have two governors here who have responded to probably more than their fair share of challenges, but I think they both agree that the fun part is creating opportunities, and that's really where you create an impact for the state. If you think back, you know, this is a story that can go back a year, it can go back five years. I want to go back 50 years to the 1970s when Dick Knipp said, we need to stop taking our two-year medical students and sending them out of state. They don't come back. Why are we doing that? We need a four-year school here in South Dakota. So they set it up in Vermillion and in Sioux Falls. And that created the workforce that built the foundation for Sioux Valley Hospital, which was one hospital at the corner of 18th and Grange to become one of the best integrated health systems in this country, Sanford Health. Then 10 years later, Governor Janklow was in office, and he said, you know, if we modernize these laws, we can become the banking center of this country. He created an entirely new economic sector. We had the healthcare sector, now we had financial service. And Citibank came here, it allowed a business like Premier Bank to start in Sioux Falls and to thrive, transform the economy of this city yet again. A couple years later, Governor Jankel said, Dakota State, let's not close it, let's transform it, let's take a new mission, as President Griffiths mentioned. This was at a time when almost no one had a computer in their house, when no one had heard of the internet. And Governor Jankel said, we need to be, have a computer school, still a unique school in this state. There's no other state university in this, state, in this country that's like that. Then you go 20 years ago, 2002, a guy named Mike Rounds is running for governor, and he says, we need to be more confident in our state university system. Yes, they're good teaching universities, but we need to compete in research too. It's something we've never really tried to do. Research can be the basis for economic development. It can create new industries. It can keep our young people here. None of what we're talking about today would have been possible if Governor Rounds hadn't made that happen two years ago. And then five or six years ago, President Griffiths, pretty, still pretty new to the state, I suppose, shows up in Pierre and says, Okay, here's what we need to do next. Governor Dugard says okay, and he got on a plane with probably Senator Rounds by that time and flew down to Scottsdale and made the pitch to Denny and to the premier team, and Denny said, yep, let's do it. And then that's how we got the Beacom Institute up in Madison. Then four years ago, as she mentioned a minute ago, Christy No ran for governor. She said, we're going to do the next big thing. And that's what we're doing here today. This is not just a building that we're building. This is the founding of a new industry that will be central to this city and to this state. And it is the next big thing. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. So on behalf of the Board of Regents, I want to thank you. We'd be the owners of this building, and we promise we will run it well. Uh, I think it's only fitting that founders of this institution are the things that I just talked about, the healthcare sector, the financial services sector, the city of Sioux Falls, the Board of Regents, and the state of South Dakota. We're all coming together to move forward again. So thank you so much. As we end today, just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, President Griffith reminded me that this building will be built to the south, uh, west of here. There's a little mound of dirt, so vision it as you go out. Seeing this uh, uh, big building where some tremendous uh, education, research, training will go on that will really change uh, South Dakota. A second item is that uh, you are all invited to the Champions Club, which is upstairs to my left for refresh and fellowship as soon as we're done here today. And finally, I would like to uh, take just a moment of personal privilege. Uh, President Griffith reminded us that uh, the mission for Dakota State was changed when Citibank came and it uh, created an industry in South Dakota, the financial services industry. Premier Bank and Premier Bank Card are recipients of that vision, of that change. We today have 63 graduates of Dakota State that work and make our business successful. 
Many of them are here today. Those 63 graduates, I hope you can give all of them a big round of applause. They make a difference in our community. And we are so proud of our graduates of Dakota State, of the partnerships we have here. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being part of this game changer for South Dakota.